All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another StarCraft II subscriber showdown. We're going to have a 4v4 on the Ultimate Campaign mod. This is not the same one as the SC2 Complete Edition. We've done some games on. This is the one that is a little bit more fair, makes more sense. You don't have extra money. You don't have free supply. And I made everyone play random that I could, and wow, look at that. The teams look relatively balanced. So... For those of you that don't know, this recorded live on my Twitch.tv stream. You can check me out at Twitch.tv slash Nathanius, where technically I am streaming right now for another seven hours. I stream from about 1 p.m. Pacific time to about 9 p.m. Pacific time. I've also been starting to stream some Gears of War 4 as the beta is online. So, yeah. And we will definitely be doing a lot more of all of that good stuff. So, with that being said... All the players that you see playing in these games are my awesome Twitch TV subscribers. You can support me $4.99 a month. You get my replays every week. You get to play in these awesome games. And somehow, someway, I did not see the message from Cracknut Eddie who wanted to play in this game. I love you. I apologize. You are 100% in the next one. I am blind. I need glasses. It's true. I'm literally blind. I'm more blind than Daredevil. I don't even know how I play StarCraft. In the bottom left, Ostomark from the uh, from the bottom team, I guess. It's This one's going to be... How does this map even work for 4v4? Oh, it's cross, right? Wait, why does he have vision? Oh, overlords. Okay, so it's bottom left and top right versus top left and bottom right. So in the top left, you have Dridius with one Oni-chan. And they are teaming up with Resin and Avex. And in the bottom left, we have Digitalis and Ostamark. Teamed up in the top right with Daywalker and SK Laz. So for those of you guys that don't know, this is a modified version that basically adds in all the units from the campaign. So as we can see, we've got a bit of a Raptorling opening here out of Daywalker, going for some early aggro. Overlords move really fast for some reason, I don't know why. But the fast Raptorling rush could actually just kill Oni-chan really quickly. There are some links coming out for Dridius. Um, could make their own Raptorlings, but the problem is Raptorlings do more damage than normal Lings, so... If you don't transform your lings, they die really fast. Rip, baby rage, never lucky. You can transform lings for free, but okay, good surround, good surround. They clean up the raptor lings. Not bad, not bad. Queens move fast. It's a fire bat opening out of Ostomark. And at the same time, more lings coming out for Dridius. Could be going for his own counter attack. Only Chan realizing I can build medics. Yes, there are medics in this game. So. There are medics in this game. You can build all sorts of great stuff. We have a shield battery defensively set up for Avex as they go for the uh, Mega Warp Tech. For some reason in this mod, it doesn't really take any time to research. There's a Reaper set us around this probe. It doesn't really take any time to research, but you can get the Warp Robotics facility really easily. It's it's 18 second research. I don't know why the guy that made this mod decided to make it research that fast, but if you're the guy who made this mod, contact me. I'd like to hire you to make a better version of this mod if possible. Um, Daywalker. And just making some Ling Bane. Of course, you can also transform your Bane Lings into the Splitter Strain or the Hunter Strain. So you see the Raptor Lings jump up the cliff into the main base of Oni-chan. Comes up with a little bit of Marine Medic play. Medic doing a good job trying to heal those SCVs. You can, of course, get from the Armory further upgrades that allow you to get the in Mercenary units instead of regular units out of your Barracks, Factory, and Refinery. And the Queens also have the Auto Transfuse ability. So units that are taking low amounts of damage do get pushed back relatively easily and resin's gonna go so he opened up with some marines medic and has actually switched straight into uh goliaths so goliaths pretty solid actually just good all-around unit for the most part uh, as these zerglings just kind of chilling here as you can see we've got hunter banelings you guys don't know hunter banelings can go up and down cliffs they also leap towards their enemies so they're basically like raptorlings except they're banelings at the same time, what are these lings doing in here? Interesting. So where is everybody going from here? Armory is on the way for Ostomark. He'll be able to get those mercenary tech units soon. Fire bats, of course. Still pretty strong against any sort of ling-based aggression. We have quite a few lings, actually, from Daywalker going for the ling Bane assault on the northwest. Meanwhile, all of Dridius's lings, he hasn't transformed any of them into better versions of themselves, so... This could get ugly. They're going to try to surround these Zealots. We do have an Immortal here. 
Firebat Marine is going to come up to try and stop this. At the same time, War Prism comes in. Double Immortal Drop. Vanguard Drop. That's the one with the AoE damage on the ground. The AoE ground attack on these Immortals is super powerful from the campaign. And of course, they, yeah, it's 16 attacks times 15 damage. So they're great at sniping bases. And at the same time, the Lings are in the... The Hunter Lings, and as you can see, the Hunter Bane Lings. They're Bane Sinatra Rain trying to hit something. Wow, this is actually just impossible to follow. <laughs> Woo! Finally gets him. It's like Sonic the Hedgehog just jumping endlessly here. This Daywalker. These two colors just look so hard next to each other. And now it's just Raptor Lings all over the drones of Dridius. As those Raptor Lings are forced to retreat. Well, that War Prism really did a number on him. <laughs> she has some tech reactors on the way for Ostamark as they switch into being able to produce two types of uh, high-powered units at once. And I do have another Immortal coming in. Is that War Prism still there? Yep. So has the two Vanguards inside of them with the phenomenal amount of AoE damage. So they're actually quite good against Lings. More Fire Bats for Ostamark. Okay, so double pumping out Fire Bats, Marines, some Marauders as well. I'm surprised we haven't seen a transition into the mercenary tech for the Terrans. I don't believe they've gotten the mercenary upgrades. No, they have not. So double Stargate is coming in for Digitalis now. He's already got that warp tech, I believe, for his robos or no? Okay, well, he could get it soon. I'm not sure what the delay is. But at the same time, oh my god, these things are so sick. He's warping in more immortals. Oh, he turned one of them into the Immortals with the single target ability, the Annihilator. He can kill Mutas. What funny unit. So the War Prism is dead, but the Annihilator's Shadow Cannon cooldown is pretty long. I'd just say snipe the Hive and get out of there. Just snipe the Hive and escape. It's your only move. Someone's lagging a little bit. The Mutas will clean up the Immortals at last. Looks like some more Hunterlings. Raptorlings did make their way into their base. Oni Chan's Marines a little bit out of position as they clean up all of those Zerglings. At the same time, we have a Wraith for Ostomark watching the Northwest Air. The Vanguards. Oh my god, that AoE. Obliterating the drones. Their attack speed is really slow, but what are these Zerglings doing? Daywalker's Zerglings weren't, weren't helping. Rip. Rip, rip, baby rage. So Avex has another War Prism drop in the bottom left with two Immortals inside looking to harass Ostomark and Digitalis now. Meanwhile, that Wraith is going to move in. Wraith gets picked off very quickly. No Cloak. No Cloak. Ripperino. As you have an Asius Guard on the way for Ostomark. So he's gotten the Mercenary upgrades. He can build Sons of Korhal now. A lot more hit points than normal Marines. They have one armor by default, which normal Marines do not have. They have plus one. They start with the same damage as a plus two Marine, so... Much stronger than the average Marine that you would get. As these Roaches are trying to go for a bit of a counter up in the northeast to try and put an assault on Oni Chan and Dridius have taken some damage. Avex getting all up in that business of the Immortals. Diamondback's not going to be enough. The Firebat's trying, but good War Prism Micro out of these Immortals is going to pick off quite a bit of this, but that should be all she wrote. War Prism goes down, and so do the Immortals in the top center of the map. We have some Mutalists chasing these Roaches. The Mutas have cleaned it up. I'm surprised the Roaches haven't been transformed. You can turn them into the Vile Roaches or the Corpser Roaches, which are all from the campaign as well. All of the campaign normal units are in this. Um, the hero units are not, except for the Mothership and the, what is it, the, um, the Leviathan. You can build the Leviathan as well. It says, let's attack. Attack. As you can see, also got the super dank Goliaths. The super powerful ones do a lot of damage. Uh, at the same time, the Corruptors are coming. They're going to take a piss on this command center. If there's one thing I know, there's no amount of repairing that saves you from peeing Corruptors. Rip. Command center's dead. Hair dryer on the ground. And the Muta is just continuing to fly around. So Stim is about to finish for green. Of course, those upgrades still affect these guys, so... I think the only thing that sucks about the Aegis Guard is they're very, they're like super powered marauders, but they don't, um, 
they do not have stim. You cannot stim the super marauders. So that's that's pretty much their biggest weakness. The mutas come in for some harass, get some SCVs. Going for the, the engineering base now, actually. Could get some serious work done here. And they are pressed back. We do have void ray production continuing. You can turn them into destroyer void rays as well, which have basically like mutalisk bounce attacks. Um, Black hammer on the way, so basically just the Megathor. Outback Hunter, Super Hellion. Does less damage, I think, than a Blue Flame upgraded Hellion. As the supply depots get destroyed. I wouldn't mind the Gorgon being added as the hero unit for Terran. And buff the Leviathan, buff the Mothership, and just make those units really expensive, you know? If I could get in touch with the map maker who made this mod, I would gladly do that. That would be really sick. And it'd probably add like upgrade costs to the um, to the other units. No real skirmishes going on right now. Everything's kind of simmered down a little bit. Mutas are breaking the rocks. Fleet Bacon is ready for yellow. So could go for Mothership, or excuse me, purple. Could go for Mothership, additional flyer upgrades. Lots of options here. Warp Stargate on the way for blue. And you see these are the Vile Roaches. So when these roaches attack, it slows the uh, unit's attack speed and their movement speed. So these are like, these roaches, the purple ones here, they have like the devourers basically. The devourer ability from Brood War is on its normal attack. It slows down enemies that it attacks. Um, it's very strong of course because of that. A little less hit points, less movement speed than a normal roach, but has its perks. Phoenix coming up here disabling this War Prism drop with the Wraith support. A couple of uh, Arbiters as well to lock this down. Arbiters do have their stasis which is really OP. And as you can see, the Energizer Sentry has been warped in as well. Or the Havoc, excuse me. This one provides extra range and damage, I think, to units nearby. It's very, very strong. Gives a lot of passive buffs. Now, we do have some Corruptors going to pee on this Command Center again. Are they going to be in position in time to defend it? That's a big question. Ling's coming in here denying this base. Corruptors coming in denying this base. So, nice moves being made by the yellow team in the northeast side of things to say the least. Nexus is saved as the Arbiter rolls up just in time. The Arbiter only cloaks units. It does not cloak buildings. That's important to note. But that command center does get shut down quite handily. Green's built up a pretty good army of course. You see that Black Hammer is basically just a giant Thor. But uh, all the mercenary units very good. Some Prometheus Company fire bats. Super fire bats basically. They are so so strong. And now continuing to move through the northeast side Northwest cleaning up their creep. Uh, in this mod, for some reason, creep tumors are not invisible. So, yeah, take that as you will. We do have a mothership coming in for Digitalis. And the Leviathan is being made by Yellow. The Leviathan can spawn Broodlords. It can spawn Mutas. It can spawn Hydralisks, Ultralisks, and, of course, Zerglings. So, Green has a very sizable army. I, I would like to see Ostomark with... Uh, Digitalis here. Make a big push. They're going to try to engage this base. Got to be really careful. A stasis could be game ending. No. Green. Green, your teammate's under attack. Green, help your buddy out. Nope. Rip. There's the stasis. So Purple's army has been effectively shut down. The Black Hammer gets targeted by the Void Rays. The Marines are pushing with everything that they've got, but that stasis has kept Purple's army out of the fight for so long. Finally free. The Immortals can try to hit these Dragoons, but... So much firepower here and those splash damage immortals the vanguard from below they have this extra two range from that energizer excuse me the havoc that is next to them and the ultras coming in from the northwest are going to clean all of this up green's army with purples being completely shrektorinoed that was ugly and those dragoons getting a lot of work done we do have some aberrations and some roaches on the southeast side with a couple of ravagers to support as well throwing some of those corrosive vials um the aberrations are actually really strong versus these armored units and they're going to get right in on top of them actually ripping them to pieces oh my god the aberration is pretty damn good the immortals are super strong as well but they have so much power it's really nice that they can walk over the roaches they don't actually mess with the pathing at all they're like colossus almost um except they don't count as air units i believe so 
Oh, there's that quick transform into the Vanguard, which is going to try to use that AoE damage to bring down those forces on the ground. But is it going to be enough to destroy your Void Rays? Do not have that crazy bonus damage. They don't have Prismatic Alignment. They just die. And the Lings are going to kill these Dragoons. So the east side has been cleared. Avex losing that base. The Leviathan has shown up as well. Six attacks for 22... Four attacks for 22 damage against the ground. That's pretty dope. And of course, it can spawn Broodlords. So... Yeah, Leviathan, good unit. Man, those aberrations actually did a really good job of pushing that back. They do 43 damage per hit, and they attack at the same speed as Unstim Marines. Now, Oni-Chan, I'm burping for some reason. Oni-Chan with the Hercules drop dumps a ton of Marines inside the base of Daywalker. Picks off the main. They're going to load back up. Oh, my God, getting back into the Hercules, and they're just going to retreat. Oh my goodness, these things can carry so many forces. That's a lot of Marines, they're gonna die. Oh wait, Hercules doesn't lose its units when it dies. All the Marines just drop below it. Wow, really nice play here. Picking off every one of these forces. The Banelings are gonna try to come in and end it, but it's not gonna be enough. However, the Leviathan has spawned enough Broodlords to be a really big issue for these Marines. They're gonna try to move forward once again. I can't believe Oni-Chan didn't get the special. Why doesn't Oni-Chan get a... I don't understand why Oni-Chan doesn't get the mercenary units. Do, does does Oni-Chan have an armory? Get the mercenary units. They're really good. Anyway, <laughs> Dridius is like, I got ultras, but they can't really help in this scenario. Meanwhile, the Leviathan is just going ham. Aberrations are going to roll up for Daywalker and try to finish this fight, close this base out. Now, Planetary Fortress with the Marine support is doing everything that it can, but there's not enough Marines to stop this, and these Aberrations just do so much damage, and there's the Taldarine Mothership! <laughs> Taldarine Mothership, it can blink, it can Thermal Lance, it can Black Hole, it does 6 attacks for 46 damage. Taldarine Mothership plus Leviathan equals Rest and Pepperoni, Rip and Parmesan, Baby Rage, Never Lucky. Adepts can attack Ground and Air in this mod as well. Important to note. These Sons of Coral don't have combat shields. And these Lings are going to push forward with the Leviathan Taldarine Mothership support. This is just such an insanely difficult. I would like to expand to the middle left. Please leave me alone. I think Green says no way. And Jose with two two black hammers do 84 damage of volley. And they've got some corsairs, so disruption web could be useful, but there's not really anything on the ground, so yeah. I mean, maybe they use it against the marines to block those. Oh, the black hole! Look at the ultra swirl! Oh my god, that was. I think a Thermal Lance might have gotten more done. They've got the Void Rays in the air as well. And that Taldarine Mothership just one-shots Marines. Hell, a Leviathan one-shots Marines. I think Oni-Chan might be dead. Yeah, there's a Disruption Web. The Marines can't shoot from underneath it. So the Disruption Web is being cast by the Corsairs and preventing the Marines from fighting. Meanwhile, oh my god, this air army is just destroying them. The Ultras are going to run into this army of so many... I mean, there's a lot of firepower here. We have a shock division tank in the back. We've got a lot of Asia guards that do sick damage to those Ultralisks and the Black Hammers. So I feel like this army should be enough to deal with the Ultras, but I'm not entirely sure. Leviathan, meanwhile, is going to finish off Oni-Chan to the Zerg, man. And there's another Black Hole pulling in all these drones. Wow. Pretty sick game, boys. Pretty sick game. I mean, the map is running out of money, so there's only so many more fights that we're going to be able to see. They tried to get some crushers up to stop this, but I do not believe it is going to be enough. I think there's a bug with the mothership. I think you attack your own mothership. I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what that means. Interesting to note, the Taldry mothership does not actually cloak nearby units. Meanwhile, there's a Taldry mothership for Avex as well. Wow, so... Those, those mother sheeples. <laughs> and then we got the Tempest here. The Tempest does 65 damage a shot against anything. This is really disgusting. But I don't think it's going to be enough. Now, the Tolerate Mothership is here. There's so much. I think they need a black hole. This one should get picked off. It's got a lot of hit points, but I think it's going to go down. Okay, blinks away. I was expecting to see usage of a, of a black hole on this green army. There it is! Oh my goodness. Now you need some Archons to toilet that. Put the other mothership in it, but it's not gonna be enough. Not enough time. Blink away! Blink away! Nope. Mothership down. Rip. Meanwhile, Leviathan just keeps spawning Broodlords. That's right, guys. Leviathan can spawn Broodlords. 
and it regains energy very quickly. Just gonna kill everything here. Another Arbiter is on the way for Digitalis as they try to reclaim the northeast side, but Ostomark's army, supported by these Arbiters, looks like it could be a little bit too strong. They're trying so hard. Now Daywalker's gonna try to get his own Leviathan, but I think it could be a little too late. I don't think there's anything they can do. Dradius is uh, getting slammed. Actually, you know what I think about it? I'm not, I'm not even sure who's winning anymore. I'm just going to set it to team colors so I can follow this more easily. Okay, so red team is winning this game really hard. Okay, that's all I needed to confirm. Never mind. Red team Red team is destroying this. Top left. Yeah, the top right and top bottom left. Top right, bottom left teams are actually shrekking super hard. The giant flying danelings, though, says Dridius. The giant flying danelings. As Asta Mark pushes through with the support of Digitalis to finish off Resin and Avex. That is going to be a GG as players begin to tap out. Well memed. A very well played game, to say the least. The Corruptors take another leak on that hatchery, burning it to the ground. I like this mod a lot. Hopefully, you guys like this game. Um, if you guys enjoyed this, make sure to like the video, leave a comment in the section below. And like I said, these games, of course, include all my awesome Twitch TV subscribers. You can check them out and play yourself at twitch.tv slash Nathaniel, where I stream from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. every day. Cheers, Arena.